Hello folks. In this video I review the X40 Max laser engraver from Atomstack. This engraver uses a blue diode laser module that can switch the power output between 24 watts and 48 watts for fine engraving or cutting thick materials. It has a rugged frame that forms a massive 800 by 400 millimeter work area and uses a linear rail on the x-axis for better stability and accuracy at speeds of up to 600 millimeters per second as well as drag chains to support and protect the cables that are attached to moving parts. It also comes with a touchscreen terminal so you can work offline instead of connecting it to a PC. Because the engraver is so large, it does require some assembling out of the box, but it just involves bolting the frame together, connecting some wires, and checking the belt tension, which they provide clear instructions for, so it only took me around 15 minutes to put it all together. The controller has a few ports to connect the engraver to a PC with a USB cable or to insert a TF card and connect the touchscreen terminal for working offline. It also has a large kill switch mounted on the top where it's easy to access in a hurry. The X-axis gantry is controlled by a belt on either side of the frame, but only one motor, so a transfer rod is used to make the connection between the belts so the ends of the gantry move together with no racking. To check that the belts are tightened properly and the gantry moves smoothly, I tilt the frame around 40 degrees to see if it moves with gravity alone, but not so fast that it slams against the back of the frame. As I mentioned earlier, the blue diode laser module can output up to 48 watts of power for cutting thick materials, but it can also be switched to 24 watts on the side which decreases the spot size of the laser with the power for fine detailed engraving too. Of course it also has a laser shield so you can keep an eye on it working without risking your vision, as well as air assist to help decrease surface burn and increase cutting and engraving efficiency. The module connects to the gantry with a dovetail slide and is secured with a couple of thumb screws. The laser focus can also be fine-tuned using the lead screw to adjust the height of the module. Once the module was installed, I finished the assembly by connecting all of the cables and the air pump for the air assist. After connecting the engraver to my PC and turning it on, I set it up in Lightburn software by clicking the Find My Device button and following the prompts. This machine can also be controlled using Laser GRBL or Atomstack's mobile app. After setting it up and connecting it to the software, I opened Lightburn's material test generator to create a test grid for cutting 3.2mm birch plywood at different power and speed settings to make sure the laser is working properly and establish a benchmark before making anything with it. Then I made sure that the laser module was set to 48 watts for max cutting power when the grid calls for it, 
and set the focal point using the provided focus block to space the module the right distance away from the work surface, and then started cutting. As you can see, the laser did a great job cutting it up to 1000 millimeters per minute. I did forget to turn the air pump on at the beginning, which you can see the evidence of in the form of a lot more surface burn around the bottom two rows compared to the rest of the grid. But there's no surface burn or charring at all with the air assist turned on. Atomstack claims that this machine can cut clean through 18mm thick pine in one pass, so I tried that using 100mm per minute for speed at 100% power. As I expected, it didn't have a problem cutting through it at all. I suspected it could cut even thicker material, so I stepped it up to a 20mm thick board using 80mm per minute for speed at 100% power with the same result, and finally 25mm using the same settings. It didn't quite make it clean through 25mm, but it did a well enough job that it could be separated without too much force, and the kerf is still uniform with very little charring, which works fine for quick, rough jobs. But I would say that 20mm is probably the max that it can cut without sacrificing too much quality. Satisfied with how well it cuts wood, I tried a piece of 10mm thick black acrylic with the same settings, which it also cut through without any problems. But it was the thickest piece that I had, so that's all that I can confirm for now.
Next, I tried cutting a piece of 0.1 millimeter thick stainless steel, and again, it cut like butter. After testing its cutting power, I switched the module to 24 watts for engraving and used Lightburn's material test generator to create another test grid for engraving at different power and speed settings. Even at 30,000 millimeters per minute, this machine is still producing a nice result. So I moved on to making a few wood and acrylic coasters with my channel logo engraved on them by setting them up in light burn in different layers for batch processing. The settings that I used for the wood coasters were 10,000 millimeters per minute for speed and 80% power, and for the acrylic coasters I used the same speed but only 40% power. These turned out great. Next, I saved a G-code file to the TF card to demonstrate engraving a slate coaster offline through the touchscreen terminal. The terminal provides some basic display settings, and after selecting a file from the TF card, a page opens with a few options for moving or homing the module and framing your work area before starting the job. After the job starts, another page displays the job progress and more options for adjusting power and speed. Once again, the laser did a great job. The settings that I used for this were the same as the settings for the wood coasters. The coasters all turned out great, but I wanted to see how well it engraved high resolution images, so I set one up in light burn using Jarvis mode with 10,000 millimeters per minute for speed and 80% power at 318 dots per inch for resolution, and etched it into a stainless steel trivet. Bear in mind that a diode laser can only etch stainless steel, meaning that it doesn't remove material like it does when engraving other materials. But instead, it slightly melts and deforms the surface to create a raised texture while oxidizing it with heat to create color 
which can vary from almost black to blue and yellow and everything in between depending on how much heat is applied to the surface. It can wear off with regular use over time, but it's more permanent than paint and it still looks great. Next, I took advantage of the engraver's large work area to engrave the same image into a large pine slab using the same settings. Again, the laser did a great job. I could have spent more time adjusting these slabs so that the crack didn't end up in the fish's belly, but I can't complain about the engraver. It works really well. I'm pretty satisfied with it. I think the next job for this machine will be making an enclosure for it, but I'm going to call it quits here for now and save that for the next video. If you enjoyed this one, let me know with a thumbs up or a comment, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. If you're interested in the X40 Max, check out the links in the video description below. Thanks for watching and take care folks.